sharing the internet connection of your OS 10 box with your Bash Bunny, this time on Hack 5. Hello and welcome to Hack 5, my name is Darren Kitchen, it's your weekly dose of Technolist, and I'm very excited because today we are checking out an awesome community contribution to the Bash Bunny project, and I'm just so excited because this one I have to give mad props to Raf. Two, who recently made this awesome extension uh, it, it, to the community, and if you're, if you're not, if you don't recall, extensions are so cool. They're such an awesome part about the, the whole Bash Bunny payload framework is that it can be extended in its functionality to the community. It's not just limited to the commands like quack and attack mode and stuff. So if you want to make a cruise control for cool all caps payload, a uh, 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 snippet that can be used by anybody. We call it an extension and it extends the functionality of any payload and then anybody can utilize it, which is really cool because then there's less uh, code reuse. Um, and they typically come in the form of commands. So you've probably seen us talk about these before. They live in the payload slash extension folder on your Bash Bunny. And as an example, get is one that I frequently use in payloads that literally allows you to get different variables that you can use like like the, the host name, the name of the target that your Bash Bunny is connected to. Um, get target underscore host name will tell you the name of the box you're plugged into. And, and similarly, get switch position exports a variable called switch position where you can figure out, cool, we, we've covered this and it's, it's good stuff. Uh, and there's been a number of awesome extensions that have been contributed to over the years, uh, like the set KB extension from Alcantara, which actually uses PowerShell to change the default keyboard layout or the, the Happy Mac extension from the Happy Dinosaur or Dino that sets the vid and PID so it's more happy on OS 10 boxes. And today joining the ranks of those is Raf's DHC CP client extension for sharing and max internet connection with the Bash Bunny. And this is super useful if you want to go ahead and just drop into a shell on your Bash Bunny and take full advantage of the Debian Linux based distribution on there and do things like apt get, right? Install packages, git clone, all the other stuff that requires an internet connection. And, you know, with the Bash Bunny not having a big old honking ethernet, uh, <laughs> port on it, you know, how else? And, and this is something that we've tackled with many of the other uh, Hack5 gear. So like its siblings, uh, the Wi-Fi Pineapple, for instance, you would use WP6.sh on a, on a Linux box to share its internet connection uh, with the Pineapple or, or whatever have you. And uh, in this case, the Bash Bunny does something very similar. It's always looking for an internet connection from a box that's going to share it on its subnet. Uh, which is in the 172.16.64.64. That's the machine it's looking for internet connection from. And if you want to do that on a, on a Linux box, and I know we've covered this before, but I'll just show you real quick. You wget bashbunny.com slash bb.sh. Come on, that guy plus X to make him executable. And then go ahead and run. And you get a nice little banner and you just follow the guide and it goes ahead and gets your Bash Bunny online. Now on a Windows box, it's just a bunch of clicking like most things in Windows and on a Mac. Well, on a Mac it's a little different because Macs think different. <laughs> I don't know, I'm, I'm terrible. I'm a, in all honesty, I'm kind of a new Mac user in the last year. I went kicking and screaming for my entire life. Uh, and then I discovered VMware Fusion, and I guess that may have changed everything. But in any event, my chair is slipping. But in any event, there's a built-in internet connection sharing feature in OS X by default over here. Essentially, you check internet sharing in settings, and you can select the interface. In my case, I've got Wi-Fi selected to share with, in this case, so I've got my Wi-Fi selected to share with the RNDIS Ethernet gadget, which is, in fact, the Bash Bunny. If I go ahead and start, Great. And what this will do is create a bridge interface on a 192.168.2. something network with its own DHCP server, which means that anything that connects to that bridge will get an IP address, probably 192.168.2.2 or 2.3 and 2.4 and so on. You see where this is going. And that's going to mess with the Bash Bunny since by default it is acting as a DHCP server, not a client. So it's expecting to dole out IP addresses to its victims, its clients, in the 172.16.64 range, right? So that means we can thankfully solve this very simply using RAF's DHCP client 
extension. And essentially what this is going to do is uh, expose a new command, dhclient, which will then stop the Bash Bunny from acting as a DHCP server and then restart the USB 0 interface as a DHCP client. And then the whole payload literally would be attack mode ECM Ethernet and then dhclient. I mean, throw in some LED commands as you see fit. If we come over to payloads, switch one, I already have that guy sitting over here. And essentially, you can see I'm just doing an LED setup, set the attack mode, and that's DH client. So as long as you have this extension in your extensions directory right here, it's get to underscore DH client just because of the way that it's sourced. And we take a look at this, and I appreciate the commenting. Essentially, this DH client function here, like I just said, is going to stop the DHCP server, bring the interface down, and then set it up as a DHCP client. The rest of it is actually just fixing up the get function so that it's going to function now to get you your target IP and your host name and the host IP, regardless of the fact that now you've switched the whole thing on its head and instead of doling out IPs, it's getting them, which is pretty cool. So if you go ahead and let's just run this payload, flip my old switch of doom over to switch position one, plug that guy back in, uh, get yelled at by my Mac for not ejecting it properly and you know, deal with that. Now when I if config on my Mac I see I have a bridge 100 interface and it has the IP 192.168.2.1 and I can safely assume that it's going to dole out an IP well the next one is 2.2 so ping 192.168.2.2 and haha there's a host in fact because it's it's most likely my bash bunny what else would it be right so if I SSH to root at 192.168.2.2 And there we are, we're on our Bash Bunny. If I ping example.com, and there we go, our Bash Bunny is online. So we can do things like apt get update and all of the other fun stuff that you might want to do with a full Linux box that's online. Uh, now, in just a bit, we're going to go ahead and check in on the Hack 5 Gear giveaway. But first, let's take a moment to thank our sponsor. Domain.com has all of your website needs from .com and .net to intuitive website builders. Create your online identity with their affordable, reliable tools. Even brand yourself with over 300 extensions from .club to .space. Domain.com loves Hack5, which is why you get 15% off domain names, hosting, and email when you check out with coupon code HACK5. When you think domain names, think domain.com. Now, mad props to Raf. Thank you so much for contributing to the Hack5 Bash Bunny community with this awesome extension. I've sent you a $100 Hack5 Gear gift certificate. And if you'd like to win some Hack5 Gear of your own, like our brand new plunder bug or a packet score or any of the other awesome gear that you can find at hack5.org, go ahead and leave a comment below with your thoughts on this. And 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 following up with the last we oh my god, I am I am floored about the comments from the previous episode on how we got into hacking the 250 some comments so far. The, the, hearing your stories about how you got into hacking as well, it's just heartwarming to, to say the least. Like I can't even, I, I could do a whole live stream about this. Uh, that'd be interesting. Anyway, I, but I, I can't even begin to tell you what it means to me really to be a part of this community with you guys. And, and honestly, I don't think it would even be fair for me to pick a favorite or anything. So I'm just going to, I don't know, write a random number generator thingy to pick a comment, reach out to you with a Hack5 Gear gift card. Um, and, and also one of the comments was, hey, we should get Cody on from Nullbyte. And I agree, that would be a great idea. And, and so would probably getting on a number of our Hack5 friends like Glitch and, and Mubix and such. I know that he's working diligently on a, a CCDC. So hopefully after that, we can get some more Metasploit minutes. And there's just so much awesome opportunity right now with Hack5. And I'm, I'm just really proud of what this community is building. So anyway, um, after all of that, th there is one final thing that I do want to say, which is that in doing research for this segment and being a new Mac user, I wanted to make sure that I said it proper. Uh, so n being not quite sure if it's OS X or OS 10, I, I, I found out the fun way that if I do say Mac OS X, Mac OS 10, my computer then says Mac OS 10. So th there you there you go. I guess, would that make the Wi-Fi Pineapple 6 a nano? Wait, no, that's right, because we did that because of the text editor. Don't ask. Also, sorry, Vim, it's all about the nano. All right, with all of that, I'm Darren Kitchen. <sighs> Trust you, Technolist. No, seriously, we did name it nano for that reason.